Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint a fox in a snowy landscape so it's going to be great for contrast. So grab your paints and let's get started. Okay so we're going to draw a fox. Um, so we're going to begin with a little oval shape for the front legs and we're going to connect that to a little oval shape for the back legs and we're going to do that and then we're going to use the curve to get up to a, a head shape which of course we need a, a wonderful sort of long nose and a, a snout for our fox so that line will sort of fill out a little bit it'll take us up to some rather large lovely ears and maybe one just pointing forward a little bit okay then legs can sort of come down from that oval and of course there's going to be a leg behind as well and we'll just get that drawn in and then just filling out the body a bit to the back haunches where we're going to have the legs sort of angling backwards and coming forwards always used to confuse me when I was younger about how the, the back legs worked how they went sort of back and then forward always seemed a bit strange uh, but now, of course, drawing them, it still seems to be a bit confusing and strange. Um, right, so a big tail, and then a sort of another leg. Like that. Now, what I wanted to do today was to paint a scene around this fox, but not rely on masking fluid, because we've we've used masking fluid quite a bit in previous tutorials and I think uh, it's not something I always rely on so instead I've got this flat head one wash brush which allows you to paint large areas in quite precise manners so I've got my wash being built up around this fox You can buy all the brushes I use um, in my tutorials. You can buy them in my web shop, either on Etsy or dewintonpaperco.com in the shop. It's up to you, really. And we ship globally. Um, we did have a bit of trouble at the beginning of this year dealing with a cyber attack on our Royal Mail postal service. And thank you so much for your patience. If you were one of the people who had to wait quite a bit longer to receive your parcels, um, but we've been assured that things are back on track. So thank you. Yeah, this brush is brilliant for getting all the washes in. Okay, so one thing you do need to be careful of it's just that you don't have puddles of water on the page. I have taped down the page, but my intention is not to paint right to the edges. I just want to sort of paint uh, a little sort of rough edged background scene. Now what I want to do is to create a, this snowy landscape, but I also, that does mean creating a, a sort of warm, fiery sky. So I've got burnt, or, um, not burnt orange, cadmium orange and cadmium yellow. And I will get some cadmium red in there too. And I've also got some Payne's grey, which is gonna help me for my sky. So I've got this size 12 pointed round brush, which is really big, it's really cool. And I'm gonna just paint in 
uh, a sort of skyline. Around the edge of this fox, which I'm rather pleased with, happy with that. Might just get another jar of water on the go. And then I'm going to take the panes grey, it's quite dilute. And just paint in a little bit of that colour there. And on the ground where the fox is at the moment, I've got a, a size 2 brush. I'm just going to take a bit of, a little bit of paint square, just a little bit stronger maybe, and just maybe create a, a few bits of light and shade. But ultimately, I don't want there to be too much going on. So I'm just using the brush sort of angled quite low to the page to create these little sort of curves. Lovely. Okay, so we're just going to let that dry and move on to the next bit. Okay, so the page is still definitely damp, but it's had like another minute's drying time. And in that time, I've um, just added to the Payne's Grey, I've added Burnt Sienna and a little bit of Mars Black. And what I want to do is I want to sort of play around with the wetness on the page that I've got. I've got my rigger brush here and I want to create a sort of horizon line of of landscape so I'm I want to sort of scribble trees with the brush with the rigor brush with the expectation that most of them are going to end up very softened and I'm sort of looking for the place where the orange finishes, the orange sky finishes. And I really want to encourage you to just sort of play around with this and not try and make any sort of perfect trees. This is a, you know, a fun experimentation piece. You all reacted so amazingly to the uh, painting people street scene I painted last week. Um, lots of noises of can we have more stuff like that um, and even though this isn't a sort of exactly along those lines I think it is also really good to just play around and, and do things beyond just flower painting and all that kind of stuff of course you will always find flower painting on this channel because it's my favorite thing but we can all develop as artists, myself included. So you can see how those first ones are really softening off. That's looking good. And that page is going to be ever so slowly drying. So we really do want to let this dry fully now. Right, that has dried fully now, and I have just lightly rubbed out the pencil on the fox um, because I'm going to start painting it now. So I've got um, cadmium red, cadmium orange, yellow ochre all sort of woken up. And what I want to do is to start, I want to paint this fox just with a, with a slight sort of looseness to it. Um, and so I've got my size two brush and I want to sort of be slightly scribbling it outside the lines using just the combination of the orange and the red sort of to sort of bring out the contours
so using a bit more red sort of where the legs are pronounced like that and then maybe a little less color across the body and also not forgetting that of course the fox has a white chest there a little bit of orange down the side but on the whole we're going to keep that nicely unpainted and then of course the legs go down into black so I've just got some lovely Mars black and I'm just being nice and sort of fluid with the feet there, not worrying too much about being too precise, because I think that's where sometimes pieces can really stumble. The only thing with rubbing out the pencil is you sort of forget which leg is going, <laughs> which is going in front and which one's going behind. I love adding this black to the legs. It really feels like it. It's it's a really nice sort of use of how the watercolor naturally works but it really sort of complements what you're trying to do with the fur of the fox. So I'm going to do the tail before I do the other back leg. So the tails are going to fade to very pale. And get a little bit of that shadow just okay I'm pretty happy with that for a for a very loose watercolor fox and now up towards the head I've got this sort of broad forehead I suppose that comes down down the, the nose and then just with a clean wet brush to sort of soften it down in there and then the ears well the ears have a lot of black in them but I'm going to begin by building up the orange bit like we're doing with the legs and then tip those ears with black and that's looking rather nice so I'm gonna let that dry and we will move on to the next stage right so that's dried really nicely and I love how it is really like bright and vibrant on the page in front of a very faint and fuzzy background. Um, I've got some Mars Black with my four tenths brush and I'm just going to do a little squiggle for the nose and we're going to do a little sort of kind of downward turned line for the chin and the, the mouth and I'm just going to sort of take a little bit of that paint off my brush and I just want to just give a little bit of a sort of wash to that. Um, seems like a bit of a strange thing to do but we just want to get just a little bit of that fox uh, whiskeriness in there. Um, I'm now going to take the brown colour so for the eyes, we're going to have sort of the muzzle, maybe I'll use my pencil here. So the muzzle, the line sort of comes down from both eyes. So we're going to have one just tucked in there and then we need to have one 
just sort of in there as well. You can also sort of do a line from the eyes down, but it, it can always be a bit, a bit daunting, this bit, but don't worry. If we go in with the brown first, we can we can do it. So there you go. <laughs> um, it's a case of not being too sort of uh, fussy with the brush. We just want some little squiggles, and then I'm going to just use a bit of contouring there. and just sort of let it be. These kinds of loose watercolour paintings, it's very important not to do one part of the painting really, really precisely when the rest of it is a lot looser. So the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a few extra little squiggles, I suppose. Um, I want a few sort of wayward, wayward hairs and little extra bits just to make it look a little bit more contoured. And using that slightly more concentrated colour. It can just help us sort of really shape the fox in the landscape. And then you can take a larger brush, size two I've got just here. If you want just to sort of soften those brush strokes in a little bit if you want. <clears throat> right, so we're getting actually to nearly to the end of our piece. Um, it suddenly all starts to come together. I'm going to take some Payne's Grey and I want to build up the sense of this sort of trampled snow underneath the fox. So to start off with, angling my brush quite low to the page, just using Payne's Grey, to act as sort of part shadow, part snow texture. And then I'm going to add in just a little bit of this dark brown. And I'm going to add in just a few little other bits. You can see sort of the dry brush. Angling the brush low to the page is really, really helpful. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just sort of add a little bit, a bit more concentrated colour, sort of where the fox has been standing in the, in the snow. And then I'm going to let that dry uh, and we're going to add in a few more concentrated little branches and twigs just poking out of the snow. So to finish off we'll get some Mars Black in with our brown mix just to really crisp it up. And then I'm going to take my rigger brush. It's important to make sure the rigger brush is really nicely coated. And I'm going to just draw in some more scribbles in some of the areas where we have got some of these uh, slightly stronger, darker shadowy bits.
And then to finish off, we'll just take a little bit more of that shadow. Really sort of define that, that place where they're poking up through the snow. And there you have your red fox in the snowy landscape. What I want to do is I want to peel off the, uh, the tape and I want to give the fox one last rubbing out of pencil because I can still see bits and pieces that I'd like to get rid of. And we'll have one last look. And there you have your fox in a snowy landscape uh, walking straight out of a children's picture book, in my opinion. Um, I'm rather pleased with that. It was fun. It was something a little bit different for me. Um, and I really hope you enjoyed it too. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a huge thank you to our patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below because it really helps the channel out. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and we'll see you again next time. Bye.